Hey everyone, Thoughts Steve here, here at the Apollo Division in the First State in Texas District Championship. Here with 3310 Blackhawk Robotics finalists at the Waco, Plano, and Amarillo District event. Gotta check out this amazing robot. Multiple pivots to their joint mechanism. It's so really cool and unique. Really excited to get down here, here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Colin, talk to me about the drive base that you have going on over here and then we'll move up from there. So the drive base that we use is a West Coast Products. It's an X2i. So the gears are inverse, are inverse, and uh, we use, the, the whole robot is X44 motors except for the drive base. The drive base is one X44 and one uh, X60 Krakens for each one. So the X60 is the drive motors and the X44 are the steer. Um, we also use L1 gear ratio because while it is slower, it is more precise. Now. Uh, recently, you guys added this level one uh, joint mechanism. Talk to me about this mechanism that you guys have. All right, so this mechanism right here, um, it is kind of like a little arm that we just put out there. And we added these on to center the coral, or not center the coral, but keep it from going off the edge. And uh, how we do it is we do two Kraken X44s right here, one as a joint and the other to move the wheels. These wheels during the match are constantly spinning inwards, like all the time. There's, it's not, uh, it's not done by a button. It's just constantly in. And so the coral goes in. We have to run it up against something, but the coral goes in. And then once we're ready to score, we'll ram up against the reef, and then we point it upwards, and we shoot it out at really fast. It's faster than any other uh, like moving wheel on the robot besides maybe the drive. But like it's faster than this because if not, we can't get it over into the trough action section. I don't know. You guys are using L1, so it might be faster than your drive base. But yeah. <laughs> but go, going up, talk about your elevator and then the design process moving upwards. So with the elevator, we uh, decided to use hard pulleys because they are lightweight and they don't take up as much space. We also use this string, which is saline string, and it's very lightweight but also very strong. And so we decided to go with a continuous design, which we do nearly every year that we do an elevator. And um, with it, it moves up by stage. The robot's on right now, so it's gonna be hard to move it. But um, we put on these hard stops to hold it in place because a lot of problems that we used to run into were the uh, elevator not being tight enough and moving forward or backwards and even falling out. Uh, and then we decided to change uh, these like holders right here instead of what we originally had which were 3d prints and then a bar across we decided to clamp it in with these aluminum uh, aluminum bars and we decided to use rivets rather than screws because it's gonna be more tight and just overall be better uh, this thing, as you'll see, is ridden with lightning holes because we were originally pushing the weight limit, so we had to drill out a bunch of holes in order to make it better and lighter. Uh, we use these bearing blocks, which are done by West Coast Products, as well as our drive base. And we decided to change them up, though, and use different bearings on the inside with various spacers to allow for a more tighter, free-moving uh, mechanism. Yeah, talking about the, that uh, weight that you guys had, when I saw the pictures of when the robot was out, I saw so much pocketing that was going on, I was like worried, like the durability of all that pocketing. How has the durability been with everything? It's actually been very durable. Um, we use this triangle pattern with the CNC machine, so it really helps with durability. Uh, we haven't really ran into any problems. There hasn't been any like denting or bending of the aluminum very much at all. Um, other than that, I mean, the elevator is pretty sound. We haven't had very many problems with it. 
All right, Elise, talk to us about this uh, intake that you guys have, as, lo as well as the manipulator that you have over here. So um, our intake, it's over on the back side of the robot because it's connected to our climber, which we'll get to in a little bit. But we wanted to be able to have it all in one place. So basically, it's just a funnel, and you shoot the coral in there, and it, since it's a funnel, it just turns it in the right way. These motors spin it through, and then when um, it comes through here, so it goes right here, and these motors spin to spin the coral out, but they don't spin continuously throughout our um, game, just like that. So we can obtain the coral through the funnel, hold it there, and get to our destination at L4, L3, L2, um, and shoot it from there while it's been held in there driving to the reef. We use an X44 motor to get these wheels to spin, and it just goes straight on through and the elevator lifts this piece up. So on our coral score, we originally had it set at a 25 degree angle, but this angle was not as efficient to score on L1, L, no, L2, L3, and L4, because their L4 is obviously like this and L2 and 3 are like this. So we adjusted it to a 35 degree angle to allow for more efficient scoring on all levels and have better results in our matches. Now let's talk about the climber that you guys have. It's been really consistent so far. You guys climb so high when you guys are up the cage. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so it's actually great because the climb this year is a pretty difficult task considering it's like three inches off the ground, but our funnel actually moves. So like I was talking about, it's just a funnel, but there's these little standoffs inside here that attach from the bottom of the funnel to our climber that keep it in place. Do you want to deploy it? Watch out. Um, so then, Upon our driver's decision to deploy the climber, the funnel falls down. And when we set our climber, we use a winch to wind it up and get these hooks on these standoffs right here to keep it in place. And then when we climb, we this part goes in the cage, the four little lines, and so it lines up. And this teeny tiny standoff right here goes inside the little circle under the cage to hold it there. This Part when it's out before she had winched it in, we'll go these little flap things with a rubber band attached to it, hook onto the poles on the edge, and go into inside the climber. And then when she winches it, it tilts. And so basically, the whole thing is just a winch mechanism because when it's staying still, there's the hooks because we winched it up to keep it together. And then when she deploys it, the winch goes out and then it pulls it back in when we climb. And also when the robot's disabled, we have a ratchet inside here, which is not on right now. But when it's disabled, we hold a ratchet in there to keep it in place from deploying when we don't want it to deploy. So for our climber design, 148 let us borrow their design and we modified it in our own way to fit in our own robot as based on their design. And it's a very effective climb. So that's why we have a 148 sticker on our robot as a little homage to them for letting us borrow their design and modify it. Now, Kira. Being the only driver for this robot, talk to us about the driving process that you guys have and what goes through your mind while on the field. Well, entering a match, we always have a set, clear strategy that we want to follow. Obviously, there can be changes to that, so we try to adjust to that in a match. But usually, we want to maximize points, efficiency, and time. So what we'll do, we have one driver slash operator and two human players. So that let's say there's defense, we can go to another source or the other. Um, we're always looking at the time and the scores that we have. So like, what if we need to change our strategy to get more ranking points or if we need to score L4 instead of L3. So that's what goes through my mind. We're always trying to improve on it. Um, our coach always says, slow is fast, fast is smooth. Now, being that the only driver, that means you also operate the robot as well. What has, uh, what autonomous, like, automated features that, you, that has really benefited you before we hand it off to programming? Um, so we have a state machine, which Daniel will talk more in depth about. But what happens is if I'm going to get a coral, I can tell the robot which level I'm going to score on next, and it'll stay at that level until I change it. And the elevator will go to that level automatically when I'm a certain distance from the reef lined up with the auto aim. Well, like we mentioned earlier about the programming, let's hand it off to Daniel. Talk about the program that goes into this robot that helps Kira on the field. The most important software aspect we have about this robot is the limelights we have at the front of the robot. Basically, these limelights are able to detect 
the April tags that are on the field and installed in known places. And we can get the data from these limelights that eventually allow us to create estimates of where this robot is on the field. And that's how we update our odometry. This, this accuracy in our odometry allows us to use auto aligning. This helps us be more optimized when scoring coral because we've measured these limelights to be the perfect center away from the April tag on the reef. So when this April tag is in the center of the, when this limelight is in the center of the April tag, our coral score is perfectly aligned so we can go up and go down and score on whatever level we want. Now you also have a few other sensors. I see a can range over here. Talk about the sensors on this robot. So our sensors help us to optimize when we go up. So we don't have to wait for our driver to unhold a button. We can use the sensor's detection to automatically exit from grabbing algae as we have right here. And we also have two sensors on this coral score, which allows us to automatically let our intake go up from our elevator so we know that the coral is all the way through. Colin, talk to me about the algae mechanism that you also have over here. So with the algae, at the beginning of the year, we decide, you know what, we want to pick up algae. We feel like it's going to be a very valuable thing in the end game. And so we decide upon design and we're like, all right, we're going to do a call. A lot of the issues that we ran into was um, the velocity that we were ejected at and was the um, issues with like tightness, right? So what we did was we went to CAD, our CAD uh, software, which is on shape, and we prototype a bunch of different designs with different thicknesses, different heights, just to figure out kind of what we need to hold the algae by. And then we prototype them with real life materials, um, not with the like sand because that's important for us. But uh, then once we found what we wanted, we decided to uh, cut it out in the shape of a hook and attach it onto our carriage, which would be the easiest possible way. And we currently are using a chain for it. The chain allows us to have better motion and smoother motion rather than having gears for the uh, joint of it. And we tighten it using the cam down here. And that just makes it easier on us as a team. And then we use in uh, a system where it's an inverted, inverted gear, I wanna say. We use an inverted gear system where uh, it allows us to turn these and it goes in at the same time. And um, we've adjusted that throughout the year with like different velocities. Whenever we decide to make the elevator faster, we had to change the velocity of uh, how these eject and how these keep in. So we changed the velocity so that we'll hold in the balls title, tighter holding the balls tighter and as a result we'd be able to score more efficiently and faster without the worry of losing the algae and we decided to use the can range to allow our or we already discussed that yeah. but yeah that's that's it for the well the 3310 blackhawk robotics what a legendary team in texas as always really excited to see you guys perform more here at the apollo division you guys are doing great as, as always so congratulations on your great success so far Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.